knowing the true church, we will know where the message is designed to come from. Amen? So this is what we want to look at. And so let us open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get into it. Amen? Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you there, Lord, for um, this Sabbath day. We want to thank you for bringing us into a new year. And we ask, oh Lord, that as we continue to feast upon your word, um, you delight to serve us. You are the, um, Jesus, you became a servant. You served the twelve at the table. So we ask that you serve us upon this Sabbath day, that you'll take the fresh bread from off the table and give to us upon this day, for this is what you did in the sanctuary. And this you designed to teach that every Sabbath you give fresh bread. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you do that for us at this time, that you please forgive us of our sins, that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, for you delight to do these things. You delight to do your work of creation. So please recreate us, and this creation takes place through the power of your word. So please, O oh Lord, may you manifest your presence amongst us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, go ahead. I just want to say this. You know, Ella has a quote where she says, um, Satan, God has to write, and then Satan could move. Right? If God never writes it, Satan can't, because he he's a student anything. just like anybody yeah. else. He has nothing to move okay. on. Now, the true church is Eve. Once God said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply, Satan knew who to attack. He knew uh, where amen. the seed was going to come amen. from. Amen. That's why he attacked uh, Eve. He corrupted the he seed. Already, amen. yes. He Satan the knew the seed. church. Amen. As soon as God says, be fruitful and multiply, amen. he discerned the prophecy. Because he can't get the man. Yes. He can't get Christ, oh, so man. he goes after the church. No, nah, that's right there. Christ, and we're we going to follow that thought. Man, so God. if you go back, Swinon was going over the 2520. In the 2520, the church was broken. It was scattered. Amen. And at the end of the 2520, the church was gathered again. And we know that there's two of them from, from 7, 723 down to 1798. That was one line. And from 677 down to 1844. And the one from 723 to, um, to 1798 was designed, if we remember, that Twenty-five. It, it, it teaches the gospel. And that 25-20, what you saw was Israel losing the land. That's what they lost. They lost the land. And in 1798, what did the church get back? A land. They got back a land. And the 677 was teaching they lost the, the freedom to worship. But in 1844, what did God give them back? A freedom of worship. He gave them the land and he gave them a house to worship in. 677, to the, that house, was it was desolated and all of those things. That 25, 20s teaching. When you come down, they have a land, and now they have a house to meet. They have a house to worship in. Amen? Amen. Following 1798, the first angel's message came. At the end on October 22nd, 1844, the Lord breathed into this church. That's what happened. 1798, he was forming a church. It took 46 years to form this church. And at the end of that church being formed, the Lord gave it the spirit of life, the gift of prophecy. Amen. He gave them the spirit of prophecy. And in this church is to, is to remain this gift that, um, that the Lord has given to the church. And it's to stay there until Jesus comes a second time. And we want to, now this is what we want to go through to, to see that this is all, um, this, these are all things that, that the Bible um, speaks of and, and shows us very clearly. So we're going to begin by reading our first text of scripture. It says, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the where? House of God. In the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed of the sun and a moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So from this point on, October 22nd, 1844, the God now has a church keeping the commandments and it also has the spirit of prophecy. And from that point on, the dragon is angry with this woman. Why? Because she's only carrying on this, 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 this spirit that the Lord has always given to his church. He's always given his church the, the, the commandments and the gift of prophecy. This is always what the church had to protect. This is what the church had to guard. It had to keep the commandments and it had to guard the spirit of prophecy. And each time Satan is trying to steal these things um, uh, away from the people of God. 
So let's continue. And we're going to see that a little bit more. These are the reasons why we're teaching all of these things here that is on the chart. Now, Revelation 19. And now I want us to see why the spirit of prophecy is so important. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the what? Okay, so what does prophecy lead people to do? Worship, worship. God. Worship God. If you remove the spirit of prophecy, people will not be found worshiping God. This is what I want us to see, and, and we're going to bring it home some more. So let's go back to Revelation 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of what? Jesus Christ. All right. And of all things that he saw, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So the words of this prophecy is designed to lead people to worship God. This is why Satan hates this so much. He knows if he can confuse this, people will not be found worshiping God or, or the way the Lord intend them to, to worship God. So let us continue. We're going to build up on this thought. First uh, Thessalonians, it says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And then Paul follows that in 1 in Corinthians by saying, follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may what? Prophesy. Prophesy. But what I want us to know, he's coming from chapter 13. And in chapter 13, he talks about charity. And then he comes into this next chapter and he says, yes, follow after charity. But what does he say? But rather that ye may what? Prophesy. People like to refer to that chapter and saying you can have, yeah, don't, don't, have, don't give no prop. That's not what Paul is saying. He's trying to say those who have the love of Christ in their heart, this is what they will be doing. This is what they will be doing. The love, it, he's not telling you to disregard prophecy he, because Paul knows prophecy is what leads people to worship God. Amen. He knows and he understands that, but that, the teaching of prophecy combined with the love of God in the heart, that will win more people to, to the truth than anything else. Amen. So let's go on. So it says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. And this, he's commenting from Isaiah chapter 28, where he says, um, with another tongue, he will speak to this people. And he gives the rules mm -hmm. of how to refresh and come. And Paul calls that the law, that, that this is a law, even though God is going to speak with other tongues, they're still not going to hear him. And this is why. And we're not going to go into that because we could show that nicely in Acts chapter 2 where God did speak in other tongues. And, and, and he also gave prophecy. Yep. But the Jews still didn't receive it. Yep. They still wouldn't hear, but still 3,000 accepted it. So we could, Paul, that was fulfilled. It says, wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believeth not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongue, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will what? Worship God. So what does prophecy do? Causes men to worship God. It reveals the secrets of men's hearts. Amen. And when the secrets of men's hearts is revealed, they will fall down and worship God. Keep this in mind. So yeah. prophecy, it reveals secrets. So is it your own secrets? Yes. It's yours. It's God's. It's prophecy. It's just a secret. Amen. It's what's in God's heart. It's also what's in your heart. That's what prophecy does. And those. this is why Paul can say, when the secrets of men's hearts is revealed, they will fall down and worship God. Yes. Because oh, who, who can know the, the mind of God save God? And who can know the mind of man save the man? So if, if when we teach prophecy, it's designed to speak to your heart. And when you hear it speaking to your heart, that's the Lord speaking to you. And when you hear that voice, you will do what the scripture says. You will fall down and worship. But there is a company that will not fall down and worship. And that's Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh heard that, but Pharaoh says, who's the Lord that I shall what? Obey. Obey him. Pharaoh heard the voice every time Moses came before him, but he refused to bow down to that voice. Moses said, would to God that all of his people were prophets. Amen. And then when you go to, um, I think it's Amos, he says, surely the Lord God will do nothing he except he reveal his secret. When the Lord reveals his secrets to the righteous <clears throat> and the wicked, the Lord wants the whole earth to be prophets. Amen. Amen. But there is one group that's going to reject the commission to be a prophet. Because when he, re when he reveals the secrets to the wicked, he's asking them to turn and to be a prophet. But Amen. they're going to reject it. And then there's one group that's going to accept it. And, and, and if all accept it, Moses' words is fulfilled. Amen. All God's people would be prophets. All God's people will accept at some point. So now going back to this, I just want to take 25 once again. It says, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so fallen down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. And let's look at where Paul got some of these things from. Remember, we read Revelation 19, and here's the angel giving John a revelation of things to come. And look at what John did. And I fell at his feet to what? Worship. To worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And if we remember, how did Satan try to compel Christ to worship him? He showed him all the kingdoms. He revealed to him prophecy. Mm -hmm. He says, Look, all these things were like he, on the Bible, he made all the kingdoms pass before Christ, saying, All of this will I give you if you fall down and Worship me. It's prophecy is what is what God has designed to lead people to worship him. And Satan knows that. And he's doing the same thing. This is the reason for all of his false prophets and all of these different so things. Showed him Daniel 2 as though Christ didn't give that prophecy. And that's where we're going right now. That's just Let's look at Daniel 2. All right. So Nebuchadnezzar, he was a heathen. And it was it was it was prophecy that led this heathen to fall down and worship God. But this is what I want us to see. So basically, prophecy helps reveal the secrets of your own heart to you. Yeah, that's, yes. that's what is designed to do. Prophecy reveals the secrets of men's heart. That's what is it. The Lord is showing the desires of Nebuchadnezzar, the desires of the Medes and the Persians, the desires of Greece, and the desire of Rome. But it's also showing God's desire that he's going to allow these nations to rule in the earth. He's going to give them their desire, but yet he's going to govern all of these things. Y'all follow? Amen. Israel desired a king. God gave it to them. They, they wanted a king. The Lord gave them King Saul. But he says, I'm still going to govern this nation. That's what they didn't want. They, they were hoping that by choosing a king, that God would not be their governor. Satan thought that by taking this world, that God would no longer govern this world. But no, by taking this world, it made God, it, 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 it solidified God in this world more than anything because he became a man. It, it led him to actually come down and become a man. So going back to Daniel 2 now. It says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah. We, we're familiar with the story. That's why I'm not reading the whole thing. Um, this is the dream that, that God gave to Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar got this dream. Does anyone know why he got this dream? He was seeking to have Babylon live forever. Amen. That's he exactly wanted to know what, what was going to come after Babylon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so God, so what is the Lord teaching us there? He responds to what's in our heart. Yeah. Prophecy comes in relation to what is inside our hearts. That's how it comes. Keep that in mind. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to bring a point home with that. Uh, it's a nice thought. It says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what, what, what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. 
The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth what? Secrets. Secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his what? Face. And worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. All right. So Nebuchadnezzar gets this dream of this image. <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar's heart was revealed in chapter 3 and 4. Amen. Yes, it was. <coughs> yes. This image, which is this, which is a revelation of the rise and fall of nations. This is what God has designed to lead men at the end of the world to worship God. This, the teaching of these truths is going to lead many people to fall down on their face and worship God. This is why Satan hates these things so much. Uh, he hates these things so much because he knows the incorrect understanding of this will lead people to worship the man of sin. That's because um, those who are confused on Antichrist will um, wind up on the side of Antichrist. But another point I wanted to take away from this, the Bible calls this, this is the secret. This is God's secret. Um, the rise and fall of these nations is his secret. And if you notice the last verse, it says, The king answered unto Daniel, said of a truth, It is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. So now go to Revelation 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave on to who? John. Gave on to him. Who's the him here? Christ. Okay, so God gave this revelation to Christ. Why? Just think of Christ as Nebuchadnezzar. God gave, God, gave to, God gave Nebuchadnezzar's desire. The book of Revelation is Christ's desire for us. It's his desire for his church. And God gave Christ the desire of his Christ church. Christ desires for us to know the things that he knows. Amen. His desire is that we would know God. That's Christ's desire. So God gave Christ this revelation to give to his people. Y'all are following? Amen. That's what Christ's desire is really God's desire. Yes. It's really his desire. God, amen. God's desire is to see men saved. And the desire that God's chosen to, to save men is prophecy. Prophecy is what he's given to, 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 to save men at the end of the world. And now, now we're going to take a turn. Let's go to the sanctuary and to see why this um, Ellen White says that the book of Revelation is Satan's studied. It's, it's his studied effect. To make people not study that book. It's a studied effect by Satan to lead people away from the more sure word of prophecy. Because he knows the power prophecy has to win people to Christ. But in order for, in order for people to be won to Christ, God needs to have a people that understand the prophetic message. And this is what he did from 1798. The Lord, wrote, the Lord began to raise up a people to teach this prophetic message in which we're coming to understand. Daniel stood in his lot. Daniel stood in his lot. Amen. 1798 and October 22nd. Amen. Now our people understand the first, the second, and the third angel's message. From that moment on, the only thing Seventh-day Adventists should have been teaching people is these messages. That's it. The first, the second, and the third angel's message. And I, and I want us to see why that is. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another illustration here. What's nice about that? Daniel's lot was before Nebuchadnezzar and before Belshazzar. That's what he's teaching. And so God's people is going to come before the righteous, are, are those seeking truth, and those who rejected truth, because that's what Belshazzar did. Amen. So, now, this is just my little cheap imitation of the sanctuary. Amen. Of the sanctuary. All right. So we're going to go through this. So we know the sanctuary system 
it was two compartments, the holy and the most holy. And then you had the, the work that took place in the courtyard. And I'm not going to read these verses where Exodus 25 says, let them make me a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of the sanctuary system was God's way of educating people the work that Christ was doing from the beginning all the way to the end of the world. And the Lord, the Lord, the Lord committed to the Jewish people the, the understanding of the work of Christ in the earth. That's what he did. And the Jewish people was to safeguard that knowledge and teach it to the rest of the world in preparation for the coming lamb. That's what they were supposed to do. So God took from the day Adam fell, he committed to a people beginning with Adam. He committed to him the sacrificial system. And then as they went down through time, the Lord improved this system. He gave them more knowledge. He expanded it until we came to Abraham. And then he taught Abraham in that time that he was going to have a seed, that he was going to have many children. And so, so now from Abraham, Abraham was a type of Christ, that when Christ comes to this earth, yes, it's just going to be him, but he's going to have many seeds. He's going to have many children. So then God committed to Abraham now this children. His children went into captivity into, into Egypt. When they went into Egypt, they lost the knowledge of God. And all of that is teaching that whenever God's people go into captivity, they always lose the knowledge of God. So he always comes at the end with a powerful revelation to begin to give people back the knowledge of God. Cyrus, 1798, the first angel's message, and, and you can go on and on and on. So the Lord did that. Then he gave them the sanctuary system. And the sanctuary system in that is written out the whole prophetic gospel from, its, from the fall of man to, to, to his restoration back again into the earth, into the destruction of Satan and all the wicked. Amen? That's just all of that in a nutshell. So in the sanctuary system, Christ came, and when Christ came to this earth, I'm going to put court. This is the earth. Amen? The court is a symbol of the earth. And God told Moses, let see them make me a sanctuary according to the pattern. Paul tells us in the New Testament that the pattern was of the sanctuary in heaven. So this pattern that was on earth was only a representation of heaven. Amen? Amen. Christ came to this earth as the lamb. So I'm going to put it here. The lamb came and Christ died. And as I said earlier, who was in charge of all of this knowledge? The church. The, the but, which, but what was Israel. the name of the church? The Jews, right? So the name of this church was the Jewish, the Jewish people. They were in charge of this knowledge that God had committed to them. But what did the Jewish nation do after Christ died? Or what did they do, matter of fact? Well, they, they killed Christ. They, yeah. they, rejected, rejected, they rejected their prophetic office. Yeah, they Christ were the light bearers in this earth, just like Lucifer once was. They were. And Lucifer crucified Christ in heaven because he crucified him in his heart. Amen? Amen. And then when he came to this earth, the Jews now... They, Jesus says, you're of your father, the devil, and his work you're going to do. Just like he crucified me in his heart, you're going to do the same thing. Amen? And the Jews killed him. And the Lord took from them, and who did he give it to? Christian. He Christian. gave it to the Christian church. Amen? So he gave it to the Christian church. The knowledge the Jews now had, he now passed it on to the Christian church. Now they're responsible for the knowledge of what Christ did in the earth. And what he's doing where? In the holy place Amen. as our high priest. This is why you can talk to a Sunday worshiper and this is as far as their knowledge goes. Holy it just place. goes from here to here. That's it. They cannot go here because what did, they, what did Ellen White say they did like the Jews did? Crucified. They crucified Christ. Amen. So this is all the knowledge the, the Protestant Christians can have. This is all the knowledge the Jews can have. And the Jews lost all the knowledge of what Christ is doing here and what he's going to do here. And the Protestants lost all the knowledge of what Christ is going to do in here in the most holy place. Amen. Amen. So the Lord rose up this church. Um, let's just say the beginning. Let's just say they're the beginning. He rose up this church 31 A.D. Amen. Amen. And who's the one that he's committed the knowledge of the work that he's doing in here? Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh Adventist. Okay. So just like you had real Jews and nominal Jews, you had real Christians and nominal Christians, you have real what? 
Adventists, Adventists and nominal Adventists. So just like the Jews crucified or rejected the work of being the light bearer God called them to do, Protestants did the same, and Seventh-day Adventists, the nominal ones, they're also going to do the same thing. Amen? Amen? So all we did was just do the quick walk down through history, 6,000 years of history, Jews, Christians, Seventh-day Adventists. And I just want to write that all of this is just the woman. Amen? But this woman, she has two parts, good and bad. Amen. They never lose the name. Amen. Because the Jews became Christians. Amen. The true Christians. And Christians became Seventh-day Adventist still, Christians. They still go back Amen. To the Jewish, yes. They still go back to where they formerly came from and use that name as well. Repeat that. Seventh-day Adventists. Everybody can be called an Adventist. But like you said, there's nominal, there's two. Same thing with each time you move to that sanctuary. The Christians call this, they say, we're the new Jews now. Oh, yes, 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 spiritual yes, yes, Jews. yes, spiritual Jews, oh, yes. amen, because it's always been spiritual, there's never been a time when it's, it's not, the Lord only used the natural, I mean, just like there was natural Jews, there's natural Christians, there's natural Adventists, amen, but in this, in this flesh that we're in, there's one group that says that they're, the Jews said they, they were, that God was their father, but Jesus said if God was your father, you would do the work of God, if Abraham was your father, you would do the work of Abraham, to the Christians, if Christ was your leader, you would do the work of Christ. And to Seventh-day Adventists, if, if you were a true Adventist, you would do the work of Christ. Amen? Yep. It doesn't Good change. It's, it's always been about the Spirit. But what I want us to know, are people kept the commandments and had the spirit of prophecy? Are people kept the commandments and had the spirit of prophecy? And are people kept the commandments and had the spirit of prophecy? Amen? God's church has never been without a commandment keeper and never been without this gift of the spirit of prophecy. That's what I want us to see. Yes, only a remnant. Amen. In, in this time, in the 1260, what did, what did this gift of spirit of prophecy do? It prophesied how? In sackcloth and ashes. ashes. But it was there. Amen. <clears throat> it was there. And in 1798, it came off. That sackcloth and that ashes came off. And the Lord now began to form a church. And the spirit of Elijah now went into the gift of these people that are right here uh, as Seventh-day Adventists. It's not that Adventists is being above any one of these. It wasn't that the Christians was above the Jews or that the Jews was better than anybody in the world. No, the Lord just chose them specifically to, to bear witness to the truth in which he's teaching in the earth. Amen. Someone had to be there to carry on that torch that the Lord has given since the fall of man. And praise God, that light never went out. It, the 1260 teaches at times it may be hidden, but it has never gone out. Christ has kept the light of the commandments and the spirit of prophecy burning throughout this earth for the ceaseless ages. The only time it will go out is when he comes a second time and take all of his people to heaven when this whole earth will be left out in That's darkness. It. Because why? Um, I think Rashad read it with, with Babylon. It was because there was no son of man in there. Yes. Remember? Yes. yes, the earth's going to be desolate and it's, it's going to be wasted. No one there to give it light until after the thousand years. So now let's go, go back into our notes. We're coming down to a close. I just wanted us to follow these things through. Woman, I have in there, woman, Christian religion. Um, when you go to Revelation 12, oh, I'm sorry, I jumped over one. Yes. You see the Revelation 12, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now I'm going to just introduce this thought, right, for, for future, because we're going to touch on some of these things. You see this woman and the dragon, <coughs> the woman, it's the woman and the beast. Amen. Where are they? Where, where, where the Bible say they are? In heaven. All right. They're in heaven, right? All right. So this is the ear. The heaven is the ear. And let's go down to the next one. So this dragon is worn against this woman. And I, I just want us to have in there that this dragon was paganism. So paganism was the religion of Satan to counter the religion of the Jews, right? This was the system that Satan had in place
to counterwork what God was doing in the earth. But when Christ came, when Christ was born 4 BC, Christ was getting ready to, to convert his Jewish church to a Christian church. Mm -hmm. So now that Christianity is now formed, Satan, I'm going to just put the dragon right out here with the Jews. Satan, in order to carry on this warfare, he has to change. Because Christ changed, but notice Christ didn't, the woman didn't change. The garment of the woman changed. Amen? That's all that changed. Now it's clothed with the sun because Christ is now born. So now this woman is clothed with the sun. So what does mm -hmm. Satan, must, what must Satan do to his religion? Change, change it. Clothe it with the sun. Yep. Amen? He must clothe it with the sun. So now you come to the same woman, but now I'm going to add Catholicism. So the Catholic Church is now the church on earth. to war against Christianity. Amen? Catholics now continue on this warfare. So let's go down to this next verse. Mm -hmm. It says, And I stood up on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the weird. See. All right. So now this beast, the dragon's in the air. Where's this beast? In the sea. In the sea. It controls the sea. Yeah. Amen? So the dragon controls the air, the beast controls the sea. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Uh, we, we just said laying a groundwork for some future things um, in, in, in the future. So let's go down to this next one. Revelation 13. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the where? Earth. Earth. And he had two horns like a what? Lamb. All right. So now you have this lamb-like beast. Lamb-like. And what does he control? Earth. He controls the land. The earth, amen? Mm -hmm. So you have three geographical locations being controlled by these powers, amen? Yeah. You have the sea, the earth, yeah. and the land. Sea, nice. air, sea, air, and land amen. being controlled by these powers. And this is for future things that, by the grace of God, we'll touch on. Um, just think of, what is it, the maritime, yeah, the, and the land, and all of these and the things, air. right? Yeah. So keep these things in mind, but let's go back to what we're looking at. So here you have... Because Christianity, because the, Jew, the Jewish religion, this woman, this true religion that Christ gave, it went from natural Jews to no, more fully spiritual Jews. So Satan rose up a spiritual power to deal with this spiritual system, Christianity. Amen. But the papacy went down. But the Lord now transferred from Protestants to what? Seventh-day Adventists. So there needs to be a new power to contend against this, the, the people that God has, has, has raised up. Amen? And that's where this lamb-like beast comes in to finish and fulfill the role of the work of the dragon. But it takes time to make America a dragon. It takes time. And this is since 1798, Satan has been working to corrupt the principles of the United States government, right? And during this time, while it's being corrupt, Seventh-day Adventists should have been working diligently very hard and earnestly trying to, to, to arouse people and to get them prepared and ready for warfare with the dragon. Amen. But instead of doing that, Adventists in this long period of rest and peace are going to sleep, losing sight of the prophetic message the Lord, that the Lord has given them, went to sleep dead in trespasses and sin. And then in 1989, the Lord decide now it's time to wake these this, this this sleeping people back up once again. This is the time when He's going to do it do it again because now, because we've slept, the dragon has made us a, a very rapid movement to, to bring us to um to bring America to where it is today. So the go ahead. It's a quick thought. It's it's, it's nice with the lion sea in the air, but the um how you were showing that um the woman, she had the the. What she had on her head, the stars? Crown of, crown of 12 stars. Right, and yeah. Satan drew a third of the stars, so you have that. So Amen. he's making his counterfeit. And then she was clothed with the sun, and paganism was sun worship. Amen. So sun worship comes into the Catholic Church. Ah, she's clothed with the she's sun. She's clothed with the sun. Yeah, sun and then you had Amen. the moon under her feet, Amen. which Christ gave America the moon, the spirit of prophecy. Amen. He gave her Ellen White. Amen. And now... Satan, what is Satan trying to do? Put Ellen White under his feet. Amen. Uh, so you have yes. another counterfeit woman. That's nice. And she's moving she's along with the, the true way. woman. She's dressed yeah, the in, in, the, in, the, in the foolish garb, but uh, it's nice. Sundays are garb. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's nice. 
I like that thought. Yes, I, I know. Sunday that's puts right. Ellen White under the, under, under the foot. That's Amen. what it does. Yes. But all the prophets, not just Ellen White. So I'm going to close out on this thought. I just wanted us to follow along, going what Swindon said. Jewish religion, this is this woman. Christ just had one woman, one church. It, it, and the Jews, they carried the spirit of this prophecy. They, carried, they kept the commandments. They carried the spirit. But when they crucified Christ and rejected this gift that God has given them, they went to the Christian church. The Christian church, they carried it. They went, they went on, still Jews, they're still spiritual Jews. They carried it. They came to October 22nd, 1844, and they crucified Christ once again. And now Adventists picks up this gift. They, they pick up this gift. They keep the commandments. But this group of people, the, the, the last, the, the remnant of time, these are the, the special people of God. And like what Rashad was going over, and I said 1840 was really showing how God had the Millerite Adventists on his mind. And he designed that prophecy to give power to the, to the message that he knew that they would be teaching at that time. So there's a specific message designed for Seventh-day Adventists at this time that God has designed to give power to the work of Adventists to revive them and, 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 to, and to, to bring the work or to extend it out into the world. But at the same time, Satan is working on the next power to contest the power of Adventists and to keep them suppressing so that they prophesy in sackcloth and ashes. Amen? Amen. That's what he did with paganism. The Jews were bound to the pagan nations. That's what he did to Christians. They were bound to the Catholic nation. And we can expect the same thing here at the end of the world. It's no different. The woman is going to have a hard time to bring forth children. Amen? She's going to have a hard time. We but nonetheless, that, yeah. she's going to bring forth children. We're having that now. Yes, we have. a hard amen. time to make converts amen. to this truth. Yes, amen. So I'm just going to read these few quotes and close out on this point. It says, there's many things that could be, could have brought, be brought in, but all I wanted to bring in was to show us that the place where we're standing are, are the, the truths in which we hold. We know that they're, they're, they're recorded in the Bible and they cannot be missed. So let me read this, these quotes from Signs of the Times. Under the symbols of a great red dragon, a leopard-like beast, and a beast with lamb-like horns, the earthly governments, which would especially engage in trampling upon God's law and persecuting his people, were presented to John. The war is carried on till the close of time. The people of God, symbolized by a holy woman and her children, were represented as greatly in the minority. In the last days, only a remnant still existed. Of these, John speaks as they which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Through paganism and through the papacy, Satan exerted his power for many centuries in an effort to blot from the earth God's faithful witnesses. Pagans and papists were actuated by the same dragon spirit. They differed only in that the papacy making a pretense of serving God was the more dangerous and cruel foe. Through the agency of Romanism, Satan took the world captive. The professed church of God was swept into the ranks of this delusion, and for more than a thousand years the people of God suffered under the dragon's ire. And when the papacy, robbed of its strength, was forced to desist from persecution, John beheld a new power coming up to echo the dragon's voice and carry forward the same cruel and blasphemous work. This power, the last that is to what? Wage war against the church and the law of God was symbolized by a beast with lamb-like horns. The beast preceding it had risen from the sea, but this came up out of the earth, representing the peaceful rise of the nation which is symbolized. The two horns like a lamb well represent the character of the United States government as expressed in its two fundamental principles, republicanism and what? Protestantism. These principles are the secret of our power and prosperity. And I love what she says there. She didn't say the secret of their power. She says the secret of our power. She identified herself with the United States. Amen. This is important. So it says, these principles are the secret of our power and prosperity as a nation. Those who first found an asylum on the shores of America rejoiced that they had reached a country free from the arrogant claims of popery and the tyranny of kingly rule. This was 1798. They determined to establish a government upon a broad foundation of civil and religious liberty. Ah, this is nice. And the two horns are going to be what? Broken. Broken. 
And now when you go to Daniel 8, which is right over here, right? The, 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 the mighty horn that comes up, the Grecian power, what did it do to the two horns? It broke it. it, broke it. So in the lesson that we found with Greece breaking the two horns of the Medes and Persian, we can read how the two horns of this lamb-like beast is going to be broken. And then God's broken. word is going to lighten the earth, like the Grecians lighten Amen. the earth. Amen, that's nice. But yes. I real nice start with this quote. Just take it up one level. She says, those who first found an asylum on the shores of America. Read that again. Those who, for, who will first find an asylum in heaven Amen. will rejoice that they have reached a country free from the arrogant claims Amen. of the popery and tyranny of kingly rule, and they will determine to make God their leader. Amen. That's what that is teaching. Amen. That's Amen. nice. Yes. In heaven now. yes. When your yes. mind go to heaven, you're going to form... Because I was wondering, what does it mean that you will establish a government? You will, because God gave you choice. Amen. And you're going to choose to establish the government of heaven in your mind. Amen. And God is going to sit on that throne. That is and nice. And to go to what Sunan said, in 1798, the Lord gave us this land. Amen. And at the Sunday law... Oh, I got to write over here. At the Sunday law... This land is what? It's gone. It's gone. It's this it's land taken. is taken. And, we need and a now to what Swinton is saying, we need a new what? A land. We need a new land. land. Yep. But in order for God to plant us in the land of heaven, we need to understand these truths, the these law. old truths. Your mind has to go ahead of your physical body. Yes, yeah. because these old truths are teaching something spiritual in what Swinton just said. Because it's, we got to plant our minds in heaven. Amen. We need to see how, I'll just pick one. How what Rashad just went over, Islam, the wall of Constantinople came down. The wall is a protection, is a law. So some nice. wall that protects America is going to come Amen. down. And when Amen. this wall of protection come down, they overran Constantinople. Amen. Constantinople was the, was the prominent nation at that time. So whatever nation that's prominent now, its walls are going to come down. And the, and the Turks are going to come in and wreak havoc in God this land. God is going to give us and a new weapon. Yes, and uh, amen. He's going to give us a new weapon. weapon. Yes, amen. amen. So, but in order, in order for us to make those connections and application, we need to understand these old understand truths. The natural. We need to understand amen. these. We need to see how the twenty-five twenty naturally took place. That Swindon went over seven twenty-three and six seventy-seven. When these are in our mind at the Sunday law, when the mighty angel come down, we give the Holy Spirit power to work, and now take our minds from here and plant it there. Amen. So that way God can plant us right there in heaven and we have a God as our ruler and we have a, a beautiful constitution that's going to protect. So now that we become God's, um, God's, uh, or God's people, the Lord now commissioned his angels to keep charge over us. And none of those plagues shall what? Come nigh thee. They're not going to be able to touch the mind. Satan will destroy the body. But because the mind is in heaven, the Lord has now... There is no pope. Yeah, there's no pope. kings up there. Nothing yeah. in the mind. So the Lord yeah. will preserve that mind. Even though it goes in the grave like Christ, the Lord is going to protect yes. that mind and the could give it a new body when the time comes for him to do so. Amen? So this is what understanding these old truths will do for us. And this is why we're taking the time, by the grace of God, this time to go over them and to bring them together. And I hope that by the presentations that were already done, and this one, questions is already arising in our minds. And, and by the grace of God, after lunch, when we, when we come back, I hope that all these questions will be asked so that we will give a, a t some time to answer them. But without any further ado, let us close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, dear Lord, once again for this Sabbath day. And we want to thank you for the more sure word of prophecy. And Lord, we see how you've designed prophecy, O oh Lord, as, as, as the tool to lead people to worship you. Um, because of the fall of our first parents, O oh Lord, every human being has a desire in their heart to want something secret or something hidden. And here you are trying to feed the whole world something secret and something hidden, but yet revealed at the same time. You're, you're trying to supply that desire that everyone has. But you want us to, to, to put that desire in the right direction and, out, and not a de desire for good and evil, but a desire for life. And this life comes from your word. And we ask, the Lord, that you would please increase des this desire in us, a hungering and a thirsting for your righteousness so that we will be filled. One of the reasons you desire to put your word in our hearts 
Because as long as we have the word hid in our hearts, you will always reveal prophecy to us because you will always give us the desires of our hearts. So please help us to hide your word in our heart so that we will always have our desires met, met, which is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you for this Sabbath day, and we ask that you continue to help us to keep it holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.